Hello everyone and lovely to be with you for this week's assembly. And before I begin, I'll do what we always do. I will light the candle to remind us of God's presence with us and of Jesus, light of the whole world. And last week, you may remember that Jesus spoke about the church season of Lent, in which we remember the 40 days that he spent in the wilderness, straight after he was baptised by John in the River Jordan. And he went to this place where there'd be nothing to distract him, to decide how to best teach God's way of love to us all. And it wasn't an easy place to be in. It was lonely and barren, and sometimes scary, and he must have got very hungry and thirsty. I'm sure you remember last week that David told us how at times he wrestled with difficult thoughts, being tempted, for example, to turn stones into bread to stop him being hungry. And of course, as God's son, that's something he could have done quite easily. But he knew it was more important for him to focus entirely on God's words, nourishing his mind and soul, than to think about whether he was hungry or thirsty. Now, being the son of God, it would have been really tempting for Jesus to decide to make himself known among the people in ways that would make him seem like some sort of really strong and mighty and powerful superhero that they would all want to follow but he knew that was not the way that God wanted him to work. But along with those difficult times in the wilderness, I wonder if there was also, also the time and space for Jesus to draw really close to God. I'm sure there was. Time for him to talk to him in prayer and space and time perhaps to think about God who out of love created the world and everything in it. And to think of all humankind who'd been part of God's story from the beginning, created out of love and then trusted to take, take care of all of creation. And there would be time even in that harsh wilderness place to marvel at creation around him. There would be time even in that harsh wilderness to think about the tiny creatures there and perhaps the textures of the stones and the rocks and the dusty earth, or perhaps the changing patterns of the sand when the wind blew, and the amazing beauty of the starry night skies. And time for him to think of those first people of faith who long, long before Jesus' birth, God made himself known to and made a covenant with which is a special sort of promise, a covenant to be their God and for them to walk in God's ways. And how that covenant, that promise, would continue forever and ever through the way Jesus, sent as a light for the whole world, would choose to live for God and for us. God's wonderful love for the world and for us and the stories of God's covenant with those early people of faith and how we, learning from Jesus, can best live and reflect God's way of love and peace and hope are things that people of God think about as they journey through the solemn season of Lent in preparation for the joyful celebration of Easter. One of the Bible readings this last Sunday was about two of those early people of faith, Abraham and Sarah, who lived a long, long time before Jesus was born. You may remember the story I told a few months ago about them being very, very old and sad because they didn't have any children. Well, in this wilderness, the symbol of sand and the thought of those starry night skies are reminders of a special promise that God made several times to Abraham and Sarah. The promise that their offspring or children would be as numerous as the dust of the earth, that God would bless them and make their offspring 
as many as the stars of heaven and as the sand of the seashore. Impossible to count, there are so many grains of sand. And that by their offspring, all the nations of the, the earth would be blessed. Well, Abraham and Sarah, being so old, just didn't believe that promise. And it was a thought that was just, seemed so impossible to them that it made them laugh. But God did indeed keep that promise. And through their son Isaac and his son Jacob came the whole people or nation of the 12 tribes of Israel. The Bible is full of stories of people who encountered God's love and his promises in very different ways. And of how in sending Jesus, all those promises were fulfilled. And in the coming weeks, as we journey through Lent and Easter, we'll hear more of just how Jesus accomplished that promise and revealed the way of God's love to the whole world. Time for a prayer. Heavenly, gracious Father, thank you for this beautiful world and for all your promises. We thank you for the Bible stories we hear in this season of Lent that prepare us for the coming season of Easter. And we thank you for the way of love that Jesus, light of the world, shows us. Amen. I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer. Join in with me if you wish. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Stay safe. Stay well. Remember to love and care for each other. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye bye.